Hi, this is M, and today I want to do a little test. All of these pieces that you see before you, I applied the flowers with matte Mod Podge. And that's pretty much my go-to when I'm using what I call a wet medium to adhere flowers onto a background and also for putting a, a layer over the top to protect them so that if you use them in journals or as part of embellishments for tags or other purposes, you can run your fingers along them and they won't, uh, you know, they shouldn't break apart. And you'll see with a Mod Podge, let me bring this closer to the camera, what you get as far as the sheen. It, it, even though it says matte, you see, see what you can tell there, you still get a little bit of a satin finish which is fine. Uh, I prefer satin and matte finishes to high gloss on certain things. And uh, for this application, I prefer the, the non-high gloss finish. So as you can see, all of these pieces have been done with the uh, matte Mod Podge. And this one, when I'm done embellishing and doing this, will be some sort of tag or some sort of journal embellishment. I thought this one turned out pretty cute. It's just a, a faux stamp. And that's a uh, Potentilla. This is uh, Fuchsia. And Buttercup. This was the beginning of a tag for using a maple leaf. And then this I put uh, a, uh, a little piece of fern on some handmade type paper. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, I'm actually going to do a process uh, here in included in this video where I'm going to apply Mod Podge and Collage Podge to two different uh, embellishments and then we'll take a look at what how it wrinkles the paper, if it wrinkles the paper, how it lays down on top of the flowers as well as uh, what kind of sheen that they leave. So if this sounds like something that you might be interested in then please stay tuned. Let's take a closer look at the two products. This one says water-based sealer, glue, and finish. And then it says it's used on all surfaces, non-toxic start room temperature, apply with a brush. And then it's got some more information on there that if you're interested you can read about. But it doesn't say anything about what this other one says, which we'll take a look at, which is the Collage Podge also says water resistant glue sealer finish whereas the other one doesn't say water resistant and only says water base and then this one dries clear water resistant smooth finish super easy seals paper to cardboard paper mache terracotta wood canvas glass plaster and foam used with greeting cards gift wrap stamps, posters, magazines, and color copies. Uh, I'm curious to see how this is going to do because this seems like it might be even better in terms of its water resistance and the di different kinds of surfaces it can go on, including glass. So I'm real curious to see how that will work. The other thing I want to note is that Mod Podge is from Plaid. And then this collage podge is by Eileen's. First thing we need is our tools to get started. And they're pretty simple, just some paper to put your flowers on. I've just brought uh, a couple of different things here, so we'll see where we go with the paper. Then I don't use the Mod Podge or the collage podge out of the uh, containers that I showed you a little bit ago. I transfer them into these two ounce containers. 
And then that way you'll see I can just open the tops and stick the brush down in because most of the stuff that I do is on the smaller size. If I'm doing a large scale project, then I I'll, uh, then I need a larger brush, then I'll, I'll uh, have a container accordingly. Then you just need some water, paper towels, a little pair of uh, scissors. I've got a couple different brush sizes here. And then tweezers, and I usually have a couple. And I want to show you something I did to this pair of tweezers, which really comes in handy when you start working with uh, wet mediums. Do you see how these tips are bent in together, leaving some air pockets in here? Well, I bent the, just simply, uh, I can't remember if I did it with my hands or took a tool, but I bent the tips in because they did look, I think these are the same pair of tweezers. Well, no, but they're almost the same, but you'll get the, get the idea. You see how the one is bent, and then these are straight, more straight, and then bent. And you'll see why these are important when, uh, when we actually get to work here. So that's just a little trick, and you may want to do that with a pair of your tweezers. And the last thing that we'll need are pressed flowers. And so what I've done is I have uh, pulled some pressed flowers that we can work with today. And of course I always <laughs> have to have my my Queen Anne. I thought we would uh, definitely use the two pansies because I've got two of them. We'll use those for our tests. And they're pretty sheer so that'll give us a good idea how things lay down. And the other comment that I want to make is I do color enhance things for the most part uh, and all these things on here with the exception of the Queen Anne which I generally don't color enhance has had some tinting applied so when I turn these over and do the back side you're going to see some stains from paints um, you probably see some fading from the material because I've had these in my stash for a little bit and uh, I'm thinking about doing a color enhancement playlist. I do go into color enhancement, which I'll link down in the description and in a, in a uh, playlist at the end of the video, that I talk about color enhancing, but it's buried in a hour long, probably over an hour, maybe an hour and a half long video from a year or two ago. So unless people are really uh, devoted to watching my channel they may not have seen that so I just thought well maybe I need to start at the beginning and do a playlist on color enhancement because I'm really big on that and having said that if you're just doing cards or things with tags and things like that that aren't going to be around for a whole long time or there are things that that uh, last normally you don't need to worry about it but because I sell things and I want things to you know, I don't know what someone's going to do with it. I'll oftentimes color enhance, and, and I would go into more detail about that in those particular videos. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Uh, I don't know if, if anyone would like that. Anyway, having said all of that, let's get started. The three other things that will come in handy is something to put your uh, pieces on once you've applied the Mod Podge or the Collage Podge because they will be a little wet and damp. This, anything that, that doesn't stick. This happens to be the back of label sheets because I use a lot of labels in my regular business. But I uh, imagine that parchment paper or wax paper or anything, you know, freezer paper on the waxy side would work. Uh, the other thing is after I do these and they dry on the uh, non-stick paper that I just showed you. I will put them in some sort of non-glossy book and any anything will do. You can hold phone books or anything that just is non-glossy pages. And the reason I do that is I I will put them in the book and then I'll put a I'll put a weight on top, generally just an, a, a book. I'll put a weight on top and then I'll let them sit overnight before I do anything further with them just to try to get them to, to lay flat. A couple other things I forgot to mention are I use toothpicks. I always have them at the ready. 
And then just any kind of paper, again, non-glossy, something that will absorb newsprint, newspaper, copy paper, it doesn't matter. This is recycled paper. This is the other slide from labels that I use in my business for shipping. And I always have a whole bunch of these on hand, so I use them a lot. Uh, because you want, uh, well, you can do what you want. You can paint on the on this Teflon surface, which is what I have here. It's just a, uh, one of those Teflon mats. Uh, but I generally do all my uh, wet medium on top of some sort of absorbent paper. So if you have something like that on hand, you may want to want to do that. For the main test, which is just to test the two mediums, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to use a flower and a piece of paper for the background. And I've decided I'm just going to use this simple paper. So I'm going to take these off. I'm going to go ahead and rip it down to size. Okay, I'm going to put it up here so that that way, if you're making tags or doing something I do, I can put words here or I can embellish down here and still leave the the pansy intact, so I think we'll do that. And then I need to rip this side. This pansy's just a little bit smaller than the other one. And same thing, so we'll just do that. Okay, rolling my sleeves up. We're getting we're getting serious now. And I think that I'm gonna decide which brush. Uh, this is a nylon here, and I'm not sure what this one is. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I'll use this one. Feels more like a natural hair. Let's do the. I want to do the collage podge first because I've never used it, and I'm really kind of excited to to see. Let me bring the camera up a little closer. Okay, collage podge, and then here we go. I tend to subscribe to the less is more. A lot of times I'll put it right on the back of the flower, but these or the leaves, but these are so. Um, you know they're they're not super thick, so I'm just going to put a light coat right on the background. And I'm only right now putting it where we need it for the flower. Let's set the flower on top, and then I'm just going to start from the middle, and I'm going to tap out. And usually, I uh, let me get a paper towel. I usually like to wait and let the back dry before I add the top coat. So I'm going to take this paper towel. And I'm going to do it down even further, and I'm just going to smooth it. And yeah, maybe I'm taking off a little collage podge off the other paper, but that's fine. Okay, so that one I'm going to set aside to dry. And then we're going to bring this one over. I'm going to put this cap back on. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, dip my brush and just rinse it a little bit. Try to get it real dry. And now we'll use the Mod Podge. This is matte. Okay, same thing. Take a little bit and as you can see we've got it all the way down. Yes, we do. This stuff dries pretty quick, so I'll hurry up. Same thing, tap it out. Put my brush in the water, cap back on. I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. I just want to make sure that the paper towel isn't dragging on anything. Okay, 
at this point I'm going to let it dry and then I'll be back and we will put a top layer on and then we can let that dry and then we'll analyze what we think. So it's been a few minutes and these are dry to the touch to where if I put a piece of paper on top and press down it's nothing sticking. And so I'm going to finish the drying process, although they're not dry dry yet, but I'm going to finish them right now. I'm going to go up and get a cup of tea while I wait, and I'm going to put some weight on them just because. I tend to be, be like that. So I'll leave that on for a few minutes, and then we'll move to the next step. You don't have to do this. It's just that I need to go do a couple things, and I, I like to try to get them to lay as flat as possible in the meantime. Uh, not really necessary. You can actually just go ahead and put the flowers down like we just did, put a coat of Mod Podge or Collage Podge on top and be done. And we will do one of those next, but right now I'm doing it the more fi <laughs> the finicky way. Okay, something else that we also need to consider on multi-petal uh, flowers. Something that's uh, single, in other words, leaves oftentimes. Let me get this fern, for example. Uh, they're just, they're, they're not multi. It's just, it's just a one surface situation. So you don't have to think about this next aspect. And what it is, is that these things, you want to see if these petals are going to lift up. And I don't know if you can tell, but you can see how my my um, tweezer is under there. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at areas where the petal might lift up and think about is if when I lay the top coat on is that going to be enough or do we need to get under there when we lay the top coat on? Same here. Do we need to put anything under there? See how how the tweezers getting up under there? Hopefully I don't ruin it trying to demonstrate. So we may want to get up under there a little bit. And this one was the collage podge, right? <laughs> I should probably put a note on the back. What's what? I'm going to grab a pencil and just put a tiny little CP on the back for collage podge so I don't get messed up. Okay, so let's get the... Now, I think for this, I'm probably going to want to use this brush, or maybe even a smaller one, because I want to get down under there. So I'm going to go grab a smaller brush and be back. So I now have the brush we originally used and then this small brush. And so what I'm going to do, this is back to the collage podge piece. I'm going to take a little bit of um, collage podge and just tap excess off. And I'm just going to go under here and I'm going to use this bottle to hold it down while I check and see. Let me see if I can bring this down anymore. Okay. And then let's see if I need to get up under under anything. This is actually looking pretty good. And the thing about a small brush is a small brush can actually tease it up and get under there without really even having to use the... Uh, and you don't want much because I, I don't want to cause ripples, which is why I'm just it, it, using a very small amount and tapping the excess off. I'm going to go up under here gently and see. And you can see how I'm getting up under there. Smooth it out. Same here. Let's get up under there. Do we need to get up under there? Yeah, there's a little bit there. Basically, because it's a wet medium and you're going to be using it for... Uh, you know, if you're using it where people are going to touch it, as I mentioned earlier, you know, journal tanks, embellishments. What what these to me are? These are things that 
What I like, the reason why I like to do these little pieces that you saw at the very beginning of the video, and for example, this, is because then these, these embellishment bits can then be put on something larger, like a larger tag or um, any number of things. Or you can use them for cards, or you can uh, do other purposes with them. But because it's a wet medium and I'm not going to be laying any laminate or contact paper or anything else on top, I want people to be able to touch them and not have them break apart. So that's the reason for that. So that should be just fine. And I'm going to put this brush in the water because for the overall, I'm going to go back to using this bigger brush. And now you want to start at the middle. This is where a toothpick comes in handy. You want to start at the middle and work out. bit more in the middle. Work out. I need a little bit more it looks like. Alright, so now that the flower looks like it's completely coated, I'm just going to go out. Oh, there's one other area that I needed to get up under. I can see it now before this dries. Up under here. I see. I should have should have caught that. Uh-oh. Needed to catch this before I put that Mod Podge on. Because I'm going to be demonstrating something that we should have caught sooner. See, now that side's stuck. Okay, well. I don't know if I'm going to be able to tease this out or not. Ah, oh, I think we did. I think we did. Yeah, I think we did. I think we averted a disaster here. It might be a little bit, um, might be a little bit and I think I actually did the same thing here. Oh well, sometimes you can't be a perfectionist. I'm going to take a piece of this paper. This is the anti-stick. And I'm going to press it out. dry enough yet. Let's get a dry brush. Okay. All right, I'm just going to let this sit. This was the collage podge and dry. So hopefully that crisis was averted. I'm not doing the rest of the paper right now. I'm just going to let this dry. Now let's use the Mod Podge. And let's try to think a little bit better on our, our areas that we need to be concerned about. Okay, so we've got this area and this area, this area, this area. And I had forgotten about these areas, although on this one, it doesn't look like it wants to come up. So really, we're only talking about underneath here and here. And not really too much anywhere else. So let me grab my small brush. Dry it off. 
And now we're working with the matte Mod Podge. I'm going to use this, hold that down. I like having these little containers around because <laughs> it's like having an extra hand to, to hold something down. Let's get a little bit on our brush, wipe the excess off, and just see if there's anywhere where we need to go under. Let's seal down the current. up under here and up under here smooth it down okay and then I'm going to grab a little piece of tissue and cover my finger and hopefully wipe some of this off before we add our next layer okay Get this brush, dry it off. Okay, and just a little bit of Mod Podge. Yeah, wipe some excess off. Just like before, we're going to start at the middle and work our way out. Looks like we did need a little bit up under there, but I think we'll be okay. And a little, work our way out. That was too much. Okay, I'm going to wipe some of the excess off now, and I'm going to pull. Okay, we'll let this dry, then we'll decide what we want to do next. While we're waiting for the pansies to dry, I wanted to use the collage podge to uh, just do a little quick arrangement. And this one I'm going to do everything at once to see what happens. Now, when I'm putting something behind what I call the feature flower, in this case it's going to be this hydrangea, and I want to put a few leaves behind. I just get a feel for how big is the hydrangea and where do I want to put my foliage. And so then what I'm going to do is take, let me dry this brush off. So I'm going to uh, take the collage podge, get a little bit on the brush, And then move this out of the way and start laying these down where I think that I want them. Need a little bit more collage podge. All right, so I wanted to bring them in just a little bit. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and put a little on top too. So this this is a different technique than what we used for the the um, the one we just did. We're actually going to do top and bottom. Hopefully on the camera. Oop, it came up. That's fine. Maybe it came up because we don't have enough collage podge down. And this is where these tweezers come in handy that, that go together. So you can get up under there and uh, only use the tips to place things down. So I'm going to use some more collage podge. Be a little bit more heavy handed here. Okay. And then let's put this one back on. I'm using my tweezers to move it around. 
Now I'm going to smooth it out. And then, now remember that check that we did on the, the pansies before? This has got petals that overlay other petals. And so I was looking to see if they needed anything, and they really don't look like they do because when I color enhanced this flower, there was just enough um, stuff that seeped under there to accomplish the task for me already. So I don't need to worry about that. Let's take some more a collage and podge and put this here. And I think that's going to work out. Figure out how you want to put your flower. Probably something like that. Or maybe move it around a little bit. I don't know. That's the worst part. It always takes me a long time to figure out. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> Hopefully other people aren't quite as... as I like that. So that's how we're going to do that. All right. Now I'm just going to be a little bit more heavy-handed because now I'm just going to put the whole flower down. And once you put it down, if you've glued it all, it's going to be hard to lift up. So get it where you want it the first time. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, I'm going to use my finger to uh, smooth this stuff out for a minute. This one's got the this one's got the the wet on it. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. <laughs> I was telling you stories. I said we're gonna do the top two, but I'm not. I I tend to like to let it dry a little bit. I guess we're gonna wait. I really like this, and I don't wanna I don't wanna ruin it by putting the other top coat on too soon. So this is what we have right now. All right, set that off to the side. I'm waiting for these to dry enough that I can put a book on them uh, for a little bit before we do our final coat. And this is the one that we just did where I was showing you that it warped a little bit. So this is, again, these are just techniques. I know I'm kind of doing a lot of random uh, moving around here from little, you know, things to another. But I just want to try to show you different processes that I use because there's no one way to do it. And then you can adapt it to your own way. Remember we were talking about how that was bending. Well, this isn't dry enough. These are. But this isn't dry enough to put a piece of paper on top and then put the book on for a little while. What I'm going to do for a few minutes, because it is dry enough for this, is two things. Two thoughts are going on here. One, we've got this thick stem, which is lifting up. I don't know if you can see it lifting up, but it it is lifting up a little bit. And that will happen with thick stems, especially where you've got the paper rolling back. So while the glue is still drying, because it's still damp down there, is I want to um, put a weight on. So what I'll do is I'll, again, take your anti-stick paper, in this case that was my label background, and I'm just going to put this on it. It's just enough weight to help hold it down while it finishes drying. And uh, so that's, that's what we'll do while we wait for it to finish drying. One other thing I want to do, since I'm testing the Collage Podge, is more my focus in this video because I, I know what Mod Podge does because I've used it a lot is this is uh, wallpaper and we, you can see, let me take this off, I was just trying to figure out how I wanted to do the, the test arrangement. This is a little um, lupin and then lupin leaf and then 
Queen Anne, but I want to show you the sheen on this. Uh, if I can do it. It's, I don't know if you can see the texture. It's kind of got a, I don't know how to, it's kind of a, like a pearlescent sheen. It's very pretty. I really like the little flowers. So I thought, I want to see if the collage podge will stick to this more of a vinyl type surface. And I can't really rip it. I tried to rip it, so I can't rip it. So they'll probably end up, whatever arrangement I make, putting it through some sort of die cut or using scissors or, or something like that to cut it. Uh, but we'll put something on there. So I'll, let's get this piece of paper to um, paint with. Where did I put the brush? Here it is. All right. Now i got to decide. Do I want to paint the whole area that I'm going to do, or just the flower. I'm just going to paint the bits right now. So, let me, hopefully I'm on camera. And I know I color enhanced this, but I can't tell which side I did. I think it was this side. When, when I'm, tr well, I'm talking about color enhancing. Um, for most things, I just try to make them, uh, well, more. They're more vibrant, but I, I'm just doing it more to try to kind of keep it in the family, the color tone. But then there's other times when I color enhance because I, I, I want to accentuate. Like for example, I like to use pearlescence, or you can put glitter in with it. Uh, so there's really no no right way. It depends on what your eventual goal is at the end. Can you see? Yeah, I'm still in camera. I'm going to smooth this out. Now we'll put this on. Same thing. I'm going to do the back. This on. It's not really the. I, it's not the orientation I had it in originally, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> no. Pulling out. Well, I think because I messed that up and turned backward from how originally I had it, I'm going to use a couple of more Queen Anne. I think for that I'm just going to dip in and figure out where I want them. Let's put one here and then one over here. And then we will put one in the center. And a lot of times I'll tap, because if you saw just a second ago when I tried to swipe that way, this moved. So I'm going to tap it right now. I was talking about color enhancing. Oh, it, it just all depends on what you're going for. My goal is that, that once the underlying flower or leaf starts to fade that the tinting from the color enhancing will still um, impart color which for the most part it does plus i was one of these kind of people that i used to love to color when i was younger i i just some people will probably see what i'm doing here and go oh geez i'd never have the patience for that but i uh, i don't mind okay so that's on there we'll let that dry we were waiting for this to uh, to dry. We had this on there, pushing down the stem. Okay, I'll be back in a little while. 
So, I don't know, it's probably been about an hour, hour and a half, and uh, once those were dry enough that they wouldn't stick anything, I just put this book on top. This is a piece of cardboard and my pressing type books that I use. Just for a little mild weight, I'm not trying to annihilate them with weight. And so, this is where we're at. I did this one off camera, I think. Uh, I just decided to do that. And let me bring these up close to the camera and you can see where we're at and then we'll do something else. So this is a bush potentilla that I just put on uh, inked paper to give it the more vintage look. Everything is using Collage Podge at this point, except for this one. This is that hydrangea that we also did on book paper. I think that is, I think the way that turned out as to the coloration is just gorgeous. And then here's what we did with our uh, wallpaper. And I decided that, because I can't tear the wallpaper, I'm just going to use this as kind of a postage stamp type die, and I'm going to use that. Uh, to cut this out. Then we had, of course, our our uh, fern. Let's compare these two where we're at right now. This was the Mod Podge, this is the Collage Podge. And the two things that I notice right off the bat initially is that the collage podge appears to be maybe just a little bit more matte than the than the Mod Podge. And the other thing that I notice, and I don't know if I can get it in the camera, but on this paper, and it could be the paper, I don't know what it is, but the, if you can see this part of this paper here where the coloration of the paper where the collage polish is put down is actually a slightly different tone. It's more of a, it turned more of a, I want to say a greenish. Hopefully you can, you can see what I'm talking about if I turn it enough. Whereas the, or as the Mod Podge doesn't have any effect at all. It doesn't change the tonality one, one bit. But this one does. Let's look at this part compared to this. Right in here, Let's see if you can focus on that. But just, do you see what I'm talking about? Okay, well anyway, so that's one thing that I noticed there. Although, interestingly enough, well no, these all I put, um, well I did use collage podge over this whole thing, I think. <laughs> Back to, I can't remember what I did an hour and a half ago. Uh, yeah, so I don't think once you do the whole thing it's going to be enough to make a big difference, but I did, did think I was going to point that out. What we're going to do now is just finish off whatever we're going to do. So let me move these out of the way so I don't mess anything up. And the reason why I wanted to bring this is I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to cut a little bit larger than what we're going to do as far as the die cut. Alright, I'm going to move this out of the way. Move that out of the way. Bring our paper pile back because that's what we're going to use. I think we're going to just put a thin overlay across the top. And I'm just using Collage Podge. This, this brush. had it sitting in water, so I'm just drying it off. Just going to 
roll up my sleeves or push up my sleeves. Now I'm going to be a little bit more heavy in the center here where you've got a lot of activity going on so that it doesn't rub off. And where it protects the uh, the flowers and the foliage. And then as I get towards the the outer areas, we're just going to pull. I'm going to look up in the tilted in the light so I can see what I've got going on. And if we're going to coat the whole paper, we're going to need more. A bigger brush might work out better when you're doing larger pieces, but this is what we have right now for the brush that I brought down. Right. I'm going to go back and forth, work it out, try to check and make sure I've got everything covered. Yeah, I do. Okay, the only thing I need to do now, and this is where my toothpick comes in handy, is to hold it while I'm working this out. Because it needed smoothing. All right. That's all there is to that. I'm going to do one more look and see if I smooth out enough for my taste. One thing about the wallpaper, it lays flat pretty good. Okay. Alright, that looks pretty good. Set that aside to dry. Do the same thing with this. I'm going to fold this in half because that's got all that all that uh, collage podge on it. We're going to do the whole thing here. Same procedure. Start at the middle with a little heavier dose. You want to get those stems and things embedded pretty good. And we'll start working it out. Probably going to need a little bit more on the paper part. And then I will start working it. And now I want to see if, if I've got things on the yeah, it looks like I do, so let's finish working it out. And then I'm paying attention to the flower again. I want to make sure that it is worked out and not big clumps. Hold it up one last time. See if we can see it. Okay. Happy with that. So let's move that up. That's where these tweezers come in handy, getting up under there. So that if I do go down in the middle, I don't know if you can see, but the only part that touches this whole arrangement is the very tip. So we don't have this piece of paper sitting up against the full length of the tweezer. That's what's so wonderful about that. So we're going to set that off to the side. And do this one. Yeah, we'll use a new piece of paper. Okay.
Need a little bit more here. It's too much. Hit the edges. Start working it out. And get the excess off the petals. Let's see if we got the whole thing. Yeah, it looks like we do. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's work it a little bit more on around the petals. Okay. See what else did we have? Oh, our test cases. Okay, I've got to remember that this is Mod Podge, so we'll do Mod Podge last. I'm going to go ahead and do all these on camera, all the ones that we did. So if you don't want to watch this because you think it's like watching paint dry, then fast forward towards the end. Now this was the Collage Podge Pansy we did. Need a little bit more down here. Up here. All right, so I think we have it all on the paper and the flower. Now we need to start working it off. And let me get a piece of paper towel. If my brush is too damp and I don't want to wipe it back on the uh, in the uh, container because it's it's just not something I want to do at the moment because I don't want to mess the container up. I'll wipe the excess off on a paper towel while, we, while we're working it. Alright. So now I want to work the flower. And I'm going to take some of the excess off. Hopefully, we got the whole thing. Yep, looks like it. Now, this one. Let's see if I can bring this in a little bit closer. some more to get onto the paper. Let's bring this up here so you can see what I'm doing when I'm dipping in. So now let's go around the peripheral. I think I got it on the... I got it missed a little bit of a spot. right here. Okay. Work our way out. Okay, that should do that. Check one more time. Make sure I got everything. Looks good. Do this one. Let's get a new sheet of paper that's got stuff on it. This is a lot bigger and there's a lot going on down here so you can see and then we've got that we've got that stem 
that we want to make sure that we get embedded. So I'm definitely going to be a little bit more he heavy handed there. This is watercolor paper, this particular paper, so I'm being a little bit rougher with it. All right, now I want to wipe the brush, some of this excess off, because we're going to start teasing it. Uh, I'm going to use my toothpick right now. Tease the excess off. All right, let's take a look at it. Let's see if it looks like you got everything. And then we do. Okay, it looks pretty smooth. I'm just touching it with a feather light touch right now. Okay. All right, let's see. I'm doing, a lot of times for brush strokes, I'm going this way and then this way just to kind of try to minimize the brush strokes unless you want the brush strokes for a uh, texture for a texture statement which sometimes I do but right now I'm just trying to smooth it I'm not overdoing the middle there I'm leaving a little bit to uh, be around the stems and that looks pretty good all right I'm gonna put that brush in the water and then we'll wipe it off and we will get ready for Excuse me for shaking the camera. We will get ready for the Mod Podge on this one. And just a quick note, when pansies are growing, this is the orientation that they grow in. I see a lot of times I'll see people with pansies this way. And to me, that's upside down. Now, everybody has a right to orientate them any way that they want. I just kind of want to make a comment that when they grow, this is, this is how they're facing. If you want it to be uh, more true to, to what you'll see when you look at the plant. Clean our brush. Dip in the Mod Podge. And get a little extra, start at the middle. Work our way out. I think the Mod Podge might be just a scant thicker than the Collage Podge. Could be my imagination, that's just just perception that I'm picking up. Let's see if we got the whole thing. And I need a little bit more around the edges. It 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 drags more. The collage podge doesn't isn't quite doesn't feel quite as dragging. It may be because of my perception that it's that the Mod Podge is a little thicker. Alright, so now I'm gonna wipe the brush off. And we'll start to tease it out. All right, now it's, it's, it seems like. working the brush strokes and, and kind of making it more uniform. A 
let that dry and then we'll come back and take a final look and see what we think form our form our opinions these are all the ones that we just got done putting the mediums on and so you can see right now as they're sitting on here um, are they bending this one's bending a little bit uh, upwards on the on the sides this one's laying really flat this one's laying kind of flat more or less there's a little bit of cupping going on not much cupping going on here or here just a tad on the sides there the most the most wiggling that's going on right now is on this one and that could also be because it was um, on eco dyed paper which might not have been totally flat well let me look at the other part was it totally flat to start with was there any wiggle in there this is the other half of it so there was just a slight wiggle but not much because eco dyed paper is generally not real flat so we'll see when it dries. And like I said, after these get dry enough to the touch, I will put that uh, the weight back on top just to, to flatten them a little bit. I wanted to show you another technique. This is a, probably, I don't know, five, ten minutes after what we were just doing in a minute ago. When these are now, well, they're still tacky I mean you can touch them and it's not going to stick to anything but the underneath it, it, it's still what you would consider damp but what I want to show you because this is the time that you have to do this let me come in close because this is a good example and you got to be careful because you can ruin something if you do it too soon and if you're not if you're not as uh, I don't know a perfectionist as I am and I wish I wasn't it wouldn't matter uh, and it really doesn't matter it's not bad the way it is but I just want to show a technique because if if it's bad enough and you want to try it then at least you have the technique so let me bring this closer so I can show you what I'm talking about it will show up on camera as this is drying um, this is this is starting to kind of what's the word I'm looking for it's not as flat as I'd like it to be it's got a little wobble in it can you hopefully you can tell and so the technique is remember there's two one as you've seen me do this before is to take the paper that it always start at the middle and work out and work out and if that's, or the other technique is to take your finger, which is what I prefer for this one, and start at the middle and then roll out because this is the pedal in question. Push. I'm pushing down. I'm pushing down fairly good and I'm rolling out. Another way you can do it is to push and roll out this way. And what that'll do oftentimes is it will solve that problem. Not that it was really a problem to begin with, but it, it will help. So I'm doing it to this one. Well, that is pretty good. It's much better now. Okay. I'm happy with that. But like I say, you want to get it while it's it's um, dry enough that you can push down on it and not rip the flower and or have it stick to you. But it's still kind of damp enough that it'll respond. Because once it cures, then you're just... It, it, you know, oh, but hopefully you can see how much flatter that is and I had to do the same thing to this one this one is not bad now but it was really this area up here was very kind of poofy or puffy however you want to say it 
And so what I did is I took my finger and I rolled it out and it really helped. It took that, that, uh, and even if there's still a little puffiness, which there is, at least it's now around the outer edge of the petals instead of all, all over in the middle of it. So again, just push it down real hard. And now you can see it's pretty much, pretty much gone. And then as it dries, it might shrink a little bit more too. So that worked. The, this one, the, nothing, nothing puffed out on it. And this one really nothing puffed out on it. Probably because they're all single. There's no double, you know, there's no layering here. It's, it's when you have the layering where one petal lays over the top of another and you can get air and stuff up underneath. That's where you notice it happening more. There's nothing going on here that I'm concerned about. And then let's look at this one. There's a little bit of, maybe we can, this one still feels a little tacky. For the most part, it looks pretty good though. Let me see if I can take my, yeah, you wouldn't have wanted to do it any sooner because it was still a little bit tacky. But yeah, that, that helped. And the answer to the question we were asking before is, does the collage podge react with the paper and change the color? And the answer is, yeah, it was the collage podge, because now this whole paper has that kind of greenish tone to it that I was talking about earlier. We'll finish letting these dry. To finalize this video, let's go ahead and take a look at our conclusions, see what we think. Let's start with our test pieces. This was the Mod Podge and this was the Collage Podge. And you can really see what I mean about how the Collage Podge changed the tone of the paper. Can you pick that up? This looks much more kind of, it, Take it a shade darker and it's more greenish. It just changed the whole tone. Very strange. And then let's, let's see if we can see the, any sheen difference. I think the sheen's about the same. There, maybe you can see it there, the way the light's hitting it. I think the sheen's about the same. So I really don't, don't see too much difference. And then, let me just hold these up real close. This one, see, it, it flattened out pretty good now. And this size could be used for a bookmark or some sort of tuck spot or maybe a belly band, any number of things. This is just, I think my favorite of the day is this one. I just love this one. I love the shading of the hydrangea and it just, turned out really good. This one I went ahead and cut with a die cutting machine. That's a postage stamp type die cutter on the wallpaper. And then this was just a, something I did as an afterthought. That, this, as you can see, the petals on here are real sheer, so you can see the text through the petals, which is kind of neat. So what are my final thoughts? Uh, I think they both work really well. The collage podge is great. The only concern that I have for the collage podge is the way that it changed the tone of this paper. 
whereas the Mod Podge doesn't doesn't have any effect at all. I, and that's one of the things that I like about the Mod Podge. As far as the feel, I don't. It doesn't really. Well. Doesn't. This might feel a little. more plasticky for lack of a better word but not much I mean splitting hairs at this point they all seem to lay pretty flat I don't really see any warping or bobbling in the paper I'm real real happy that, with that yeah, yeah just So I don't know what you think, but uh, give it a try. Try them both, or at least you have some idea of how this compares with some of the products that you might be using. Just to conclude, I like making little pieces like this that can be, then be used on tags or pockets or, or greeting cards or um, anything that you uh, would want to have an embellishment for. So these aren't complete. These are just items that have the pressed flowers that can now be used to further enhance other, other items. And I would like to do a separate video on making some tags or pockets or tuck spots or something using these items. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and have learned a couple of techniques. And if you have any input or ideas or comments, then please feel free to share. I really appreciate you watching and you have a wonderful day.